is an administrative procedure, okay? It's not something that you should be doing under duress. That said, you should do it in a consistent fashion uh, and it should be in a fashion that supports the way you do other activities, i.e. clearing malfunctions and, and things of that nature. Uh, the first thing let's talk about is uh, I'm gonna unload the gun. When you unload the gun, remove the magazine. They're still around the chamber, right? So there's a lot of different ways you can do it. I rack the gun like that and not pull the slide out. Then I'll check and make sure that the, the chamber is empty. Uh, what I don't recommend you doing is reaching over the slide and catching that bullet in your hand. A lot of people do that. I've witnessed two people do that. The round pops back into the chamber, hits the ejector, and they got a little small brass M80 going off in their hand. Okay, so I prefer you just let the round go up, drop on the ground or something along those lines. Um, loading the gun. Again, I'm gonna insert the magazine. I'm gonna put a round in the chamber. Then I'm gonna conduct my press check. Okay, everybody know what a press check is? Yep. Okay, there's a couple of different ways to do it on a Beretta. Um, because it is a traditional double action gun, and this goes down, I don't care if it's a, a Glock or a CZ or an I mean, if the hammer is down and I'm doing a press check, there's a lot more spring tension on the back of the slide than there is on a 1911 with the hammer cock or a Glock that basically only has a spring holding it in place, any other striker fired gun. So the problem is a lot of people will go to do their press check, they're trying to do this and they have to um overcome that hammer spring pressure. That hammer spring pressure drops very quickly once you start to cock it and what people end up doing is they're trying to check and then they go, oh there it is, and then they rack another round out of the gun. So there's a couple of different things you can do. Uh, you can reach up and pinch like this, okay? Pinch the slide here, that limits the slide's travel. The other thing that I recommend people do is they reach up and they pinch the slide. So basically I rotate my grip around, I use the rear sight as leverage, I pinch the slide, I can look and I can feel that I've got a round in the chamber without touching it, okay? And then I put it back in the back. See, and then the press check piece, because this is stuff that I typically don't cover for a lot of my classes because people have their manual arms that are just shooting all the different kinds of guns. And then this morning, people are going to rounds out on the ground every time we went up to start shooting again. I'm like, what do you guys do? Okay, no pressure. I know. If you got a bullet in there, you'll be okay. Any questions about that? Okay. Um, let's talk about grip and stance uh, a little bit. I'm not going to get into stance because. Um, does anybody shoot anything other than a Sosceles stance here? Okay, so Sosceles is kind of the, the norm these days. It's driving me crazy. I gotta do this. Um, when we talk about stance, uh, first of all, let's talk about our feet, whatever. Now, this is an ideal shooting platform, right? Doesn't mean your feet have to be this, this way before you shoot or any of that kind of stuff. You could be standing on one foot while you're kicking somebody in the face and shooting the pistol. I don't care. But from an ideal shooting stance, uh, uh, if you will, I want to be in an athletic stance. I want my feet staggered. Every, who's a martial artist here, right? You know what a triangulization point is? Right, so triangulization point, basically if I'm standing square to the target, it comes right off my tailbone and the path of recoil is right on my triangulization point, okay? As soon as I stagger my feet a little bit, my triangulization point moves over here and now I have strength against the path of recoil, all right? That's one thing. Number two is I wanna be in an athletic stance. People tend not to stand still in a gunfight. So I don't want to be here square where I either have to take a drop step or I have to do the human bipod where I just have to lean to where I have to put another peg down, right? I want to be able to explode and move in any direction very quickly. So if my feet are staggered, I can just simply drive off and start moving instead of having to take a drop step to move quickly. Make sense? Okay, so progressively aggressive. I want my knees in front of my ankles, my shoulders in front of my hips, if you will. I want weight most of my weight on my toes, but I don't want you to lean forward so much that you start doing the, the, the tactical, I don't broke back mountain thing, where you lean forward so much that all of a sudden you've got so much weight forward, you gotta start putting your hips back on your heels. The next thing you know, I got these people, they're all tactical, and I'm trying to figure out why they're showing me their butt. All right? Aggressive, but you're still standing up. If you lean forward down like this, when you have to move, guess what you gotta do before you move? You gotta stand up so you can start moving, okay? So be, be cautious of that. As we move forward, my shoulders are gonna be shrugged and my head set a little bit. I want my head upright, you know, 
looking at what it was going on but the one thing that I know everybody will do if we slip the flashbang behind everybody right there, you know what everybody here would do as soon as that flashbang went off everybody do it because the one instinctive thing we truly have is to protect our neck all right these arteries and nerves that are running through the the big high-speed computer up here that's making everything happen your body's smart enough to go that was a loud noise I should probably do this all right so what I don't want you to do is spend all this time on the range standing there nice and high and you know you know with your head erect and then you get into a startle situation when that Jenny's 25 comes up and starts making bright flashes and loud noises okay now all of a sudden all that time that you spent on the range nice and relaxed with your head held high is not jiving with what's going on in reality okay so set your head shrug your shoulders a little bit it's probably what you're going to do as i move out towards the gun i don't want to lock my elbows okay if you lock your elbows it's only a matter of time where you start having elbow problems okay so keep those elbows bent let those elbows act as the shock absorbers as they are and control the recoil of the gun and make that stuff work okay um, exactly how straight they are and exactly how bent they are that's body configuration okay i'm not going to sit here and say no you have to look exactly like me or exactly like pat right Every, all of us are a little bit different there not locked all the way out okay i also don't think this is probably going to work either but somewhere in the middle is probably going to work out quite well all right as we move uh, forward towards the gun if you look at the way our hands are going to be once we grip our gun the, this wrist bone is going to be front of this wrist bone one of two things this shoulder is going to be farther forward or this elbow is going to be slightly more straight than this elbow it's going to be one of the two does that make sense all right because our arms are basically the same length and when i grip the gun this wrist bone is in front of this wrist bone so that's going to happen questions about that let's talk about grip let me grab the let me just grab my gun i got it right here my okay empty gun Okay, dominant hand. I want it as high on the gun as possible without impeding the function of the gun. All right, meaning when I look at your hand on the gun, I probably want to see skin trying to roll up around the back of the beaver tail or whatever's there. And when I say impeding the function of the gun, if, the, if you start to get railroad tracks in your hands and you're drawing meat into the back of the gun, that's probably not good. Outside of that, it's probably, you know, it could be higher. All right, I'm serious. As high as you can get it on the gun, the better okay um, grip pressure all right I'm gonna talk about dominant hand to start with we'll get the support hand later dominant hand I would say that grip it as hard as you can without causing the gun to shake all right as a general rule of thumb uh, I tell people to grip it like you would a hammer and I try to use that analogy because you don't grip a hammer so often I mean, you got to hold on to it pretty firm when you're driving the nail but what happens if you over grip the hammer to the point where you're shaking then what you got no control over the hammer anymore right right and I say that I use that analogy because I know I grip a hammer and I start driving a nail you should all be wearing safety glasses because more than likely I'm gonna miss it's gonna go flying across the room and stick someplace I don't but you watch one of these professional framers that puts up houses all day long and it's like two hits and the, you know they got a nine penny nail you know all the way seated and you know I'm like that would be scary to me but that dude I guarantee he's gripping that hammer a hell of a lot harder than I do tracking on what I'm talking about all right so it's gonna be the same thing for you as a shooter as you progress guaranteed you're gonna start gripping the gun harder all right you go and you start shaking hands with guys like Jura Michalak or or even um, uh, Bob Vogel for example not a big guy he could probably break every bone in your hand he's got amazing grip strength he grips the grunt really hard but as a shooter who's just getting started if or you haven't got a lot of experience if you grip too hard it's going to cause the gun to shake and it's also going to impede your ability to pull the trigger finger quickly it takes time to learn to have independent movement of this trigger finger all right so if you grip too hard it affects that not only the speed at which you pull the trigger it'll also affect or make you want to roll that gun when you start pulling the trigger all right questions about that all right support hand I shift around here so I can you can look at the left side of my gun and I can still point my gun down right. We all know it's unloaded, but just pointing it that way is rude. Everybody's gonna not like it, right? Okay. So again, support hand. 
I want to place this hand as high on the side of the gun as I can. I want maximum surface contact area. Surface contact area is going to create friction for me, and friction is going to give me more control on the gun. Make sense? So the way I do that is I'm going to take the meaty portion of my hand and I'm going to try to fill up all of this grip panel on the side of the gun. I'm going to do that by rotating my hand here and placing that meaty portion as high on the gun as I can without impeding the function of the gun. All right? And the gun can make a, a difference there. The size of your hand can make a difference there. I mean, uh, if your thumb is riding on top of the slide stop or pushing the slide stop up so the slide lock to the rear every time, all of those things can have an impact. So the location of your hand is specific to the gun and your size of the hand. But again, as high as I can get it without impeding the function of the gun. If I, when I'm gripping the gun and you look, when I open my fingers, where are they pointed? They're pointing down to the ground. They're pointing down to the ground because I have a rotation on my wrist. This is what we're going to try here. And those of you with cameras you can't do this. But if you'll take your strong hand, okay, make a fist, lock the tendons in your wrist, grab a hold of that with your, not your strong hand, your support hand. I'm, I'm saying this backwards. Your support hand, okay, square like you had a dowel rod going straight up and down. Then grab it with your other hand once those tendons are locked and rock against that, okay? Now let everything relax. Same thing, make a fist and rotate that wrist all the way down. Now lock all those tendons in the wrist again. Now crank against that. You feel the difference? You're mechanically stronger there. The kinesiology term is called preload. When you take those muscles and tendons to their extended point, they become stronger. Okay, it's the same reason, I've said this again this morning, it's the same reason back when we were going back and forth on whether Weaver or Isosceles was better, the Weaver shooters all shot like this with a thumb over thumb for the most part. And I look at where my wrist is, it's preloaded with that bent elbow. That preload gave a lot of leverage and control over the recoil of the gun. But if I take that same grip and I turn over into a Isosceles stance, now what have I done? I've taken that preload away if you are a weaver shooter shooting that grip, tried to shoot isosceles, all of a sudden you know, there's no way you can control the gun that way. And it was because they were so used to that control, they didn't realize what would happen. Okay? So you gotta change, they, they go together. Um, support hand also, uh, one of the things that I see people have a tendency to do is put, I can't do it because I have a light up there, but put their finger up on the trigger guard. Has anybody seen that or, or does anybody do that? Uh, I saw it in a Masada you class. He said to do that or not to do that? No, he teaches that. Okay. So here, I'll show you something here real quick. Take the trigger finger of your strong hand, okay, hold it up in the air. Take your support hand and wrap it around that trigger finger. You need all your fingers. <laughs> Work. I'm multitasking. Okay. <laughs> wrap it all the way around. Take your finger and stick it up in the air like it's up on the trigger guard. Now squeeze as hard as you can with those remaining th three fingers. Now relax. Put all those fingers together. Now squeeze as hard as your hand can. You guys feel the increased pressure from those bottom three fingers? Not just this finger, but the other three fingers. What that is, is your fingers like to work together or they work better together. When you put your finger up on that trigger guard, you make your grip mechanically weaker, okay? Now, some people do it because they don't want to put that angle on the wrist or they can't put that angle on the wrist and it allows them to get their hand higher on the gun, all right? If you look at the way I'm gripping the gun here, I have, my fingers have to go down to get underneath the trigger guard. So if I grip it here with my wrist straight, where's my hand on the gun? It's much lower. So in order to get my hand where I want it on the gun, I have to rotate it. My fingers go down underneath the trigger guard onto the other side. That's tracking on that, okay? Support hand grip pressure, okay? Um, Non-dominant hand grip pressure. Uh, most of all farms instructors, including myself, I will tell and say to people, 60-70% of your grip pressure should, should come from this hand. The thing that you have to remember is all of us, unless you had some sort of injury, your support hand is weaker and has less dexterity than your dominant hand. It's going to take 20-30% more effort just to get the 50-50. You guys tracking what I'm talking about? You can grip harder with your dominant hand than you can your support hand.
So just to get it to 50-50, you're gonna have to put more mental effort and more physical effort into gripping that pistol just to get to that point. Okay? That said, I think you should grip the gun harder with this hand if you can. All right, you should put more pressure on it because it's going to give you more control over that gun. All right, it's not pulling the trigger, right? All it's doing is it's doing its job is supporting. So it might as well just crank down on that gun as hard as you can. Okay, last piece on the grip, um, and I probably forgot stuff because I'm trying to get through this so we can shoot a lot. Um, the last piece on the grip is a lot of people, depending on your hand size and those type of factors, when you shoot, what happens is this hand, you'll see people, the gun will recoil and this hand will slip off of the front of the gun. And they're constantly trying to do uh, this re-gripping action. Um, there are things you can do, but one of the most effective things to try to counteract that is a slight amount of isometric tension, meaning I'm going to push with my dominant hand, I'm going to pull with my support hand. And that slight amount of isometric tension will help alleviate that tendency for that hand to slip off of there. Everybody knows what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. I've seen people on the line, every time they shoot, they're re-gripping the gun. You know who I see it on the most? People with their fingers on the trigger guard. They're, they're shooting and every time they shoot, their finger slips down off the trigger guard every time the gun recoils. So, okay, questions about that? Okay, so what I need you to do, everybody's got three loaded magazines on them. I need you to get your eyes and your ears on and we're gonna go down range and search.